hello guys today i have a new video on how solar transformation and qr decomposition one of the interesting concepts under numerical linear algebra and i believe you will enjoy it my name once again is isaac i'm on the you way too let's dive into it we'll have a little introduction about on this house order transformation a laser proof on the properties of house order transformation uh, we'll look at a little derivation derivation of this house order reflection and then some applications of this house order reflection or matrix or reflector to this QR decomposition. This household transformation is known to be a unitary matrix or orthogonal matrix that is used to decompose a matrix into an upper triangular matrix and an orthogonal matrix. In particular, this household transformation or matrix is usually used to to destroy the entries below the main diagonals of the matrix, we'll look at it into details from few examples. So now we have two properties under this household transformation, and the first one is what uh, this matrix is what symmetric, and to say a matrix is symmetric is what the H should be equal to the H transpose. And then the second property is what? It is orthogonal. And to also say a matrix is orthogonal simply means what uh, the H transpose should be equal to should be equal to the H inverse. So we want to now prove the symmetric property of this household matrix. So considering our matrix H being equal to the A transpose, the household formula, okay, to get this H, H is, can be obtained by an identity matrix minus 2 times the V times V transpose, which V is a household vector. From few examples, we'll look at that one. So to prove this one, uh, we, considering our H under equation 2, we apply the transpose to it and applying the transpose to it we happens to get equation three and then we when we run the transpose through we have i transpose minus two and then we have the whole of this one transpose from equation three equation four we happens to obtain equation 5 so that we need to apply the transpose on this one the whole of this one transpose must come first followed by this one transpose that's what we have here and then if you take notice v transpose transpose will give you back your original v so when you have a vector or a matrix when you transpose it and you transpose it again have to bring you back to the original so that's what we have here so this one tells us, okay, so we, an I transpose, which I is an identity matrix, the transpose of it will give you back your original I. Nothing changes. So from equation 5, we happen to obtain equation 6, which equation 6 is the same as equation 2 that we have here. So this one tells us, which is our very very h that we have we have seen here so it tells us that uh, from e from equation six we happen to obtain our equation seven which is our h this one gives us back our h so this one tells us that the household matrix is what indeed what symmetric hence the proof so we want to prove the orthogonality of it so we said for a matrix, for a matrix, a matrix to be orthogonal, then the H transpose should be equal to what the H inverse. So and we understand that okay, H times H inverse or H 
in less than h will give us our identity so to prove this one we multiply we that you multiply post multiply or pre multiply so in equation 9 we post multiply equation 8 by h that gives us equation 9 and from equation 9 we we focus on the left hand side using the left hand side we focus on the left hand side and then we we understand that our h transpose h transpose can be written as this from the symmetric property and our h also from the symmetric property can be written as this so then we now move ahead we understand that our h transpose will give us our h again so nothing changes so uh, having this one to be the h transpose which is the same as our h times our original h here give us equation 11 we then multiply we then expand these two expressions and it gives rise to equation 12 from equation 12 we 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 do a little manipulations and then we this one times minus this one give us what our four into bracket the v v transpose t and then the whole of this which is equation 13 and then if you notice something okay our v which is the householder our v which is the householder vector is a unitary is a, a unit vector so a unit the transpose of a unit vector times itself will give us a scalar and that very scalar is one because it's a unit vector it's going to be one so this one that we have bracket what will vanish when it vanishes then we, it gives rise when it vanishes it gives rise to equation 14 so equation 14 we understand that, okay this one is negative the sign here is negative and the sign here is positive so it vanishes which gives us what on our identity matrix hence the proof from equation 9 We want to now look at how to obtain our householder matrix H. So to find this householder matrix H, we first of all have to find a certain vector U. So considering an n-dimensional vector X, okay, and then we also consider E, which is a first standard basis vector. To get our u, we consider we we cons we take our x into consideration minus it can be plus or minus the norm of our x times what our standard basis vector from u. Then we come to step two, and then in step two, which is the house order vector, house order vector v. We happens to to get the v. We have the u over the norm of v, and then from having obtained our v vector, we now plug into the householder matrix formula, and then which our h, which our h can be seen as this one, or in other ways you can also rewrite our h in terms of this. Okay, so we want to now step further to look at what really made make the householder matrix a reflector okay look at this remark and i believe this will explain why the householder uh, householder transformation matrix is considered to be a householder reflector or reflection matrix so this remark is when a, a householder matrix h is applied to a, a vector x it obtain its reflection so we want to prove prove it okay so we'll say our h time is what our x should give us a reflection give us a reflection so in proving it we rewrite our especially our equation here as this and we understand our h can be written in terms of this or in terms of this we multiply with our x which we will call it equation 17 and then 
our you transpose okay you transpose you you transpose you will give us a scalar and that scalar can also be considered as the the norm square so that's what we have here so which we know x the whole of this one is our u and the transpose times our u again will give us a scalar which is our the norm u norm square and then u norm yeah, square so we, we run the transpose true which give us this expression that we have nice here and then we go ahead to expand equation 19 to give us equation 20 so this x transpose times this give us this this one times this give us this i remember <coughs> i remember our x transpose okay so from equation 19 give us what equation 20 and then uh we'll take notice of some few things here x transpose is a row vector times x which our x is a column vector will give us what a scalar and that scalar is the same as the no x norm square and then we have here uh, the norm of x is a scalar and the x transpose times what which is a row vector times a uh, times our e1 which is a standard the first standard basis is a column vector so the a row vector times a column vector is going to give us what a scalar and that scalar will call it what our x1 so when you come here to we also happens to see that uh, this is a scalar here and then a row vector times a column vector here will also will be the same as what we have here which is also a scalar we also call it what x1 so and the whole of this expression here will give us what twice of it will be two times the norm of x times what our x1 and then from here we have x norm square from this expression that we have here and then a row vector times a column vector that we have here will be a scalar and it's not going to be any other scalar but what one because we understand that our e1 is a standard first standard basis so when you trans the transpose of it times a row times the vector itself is going to give us what one so that is give that's what gives rise to equation 21 so we continue with our proof then we from here this one and this one is also the same so we are going to get twice of it twice of this one and then twice of this one so which is our u1 u we are proving this very thing here we are expanding this one to help us to do the proof so our u norm square eventually give us the whole of this expression which is equation 23 so having obtained equation 23 then we substitute it into this reflection here okay we have seen this one from the previous slides which is the whole of this one is the u norm square u norm square so uh, from equation 24 we multiply through by our x here which gives us equation 25. So having obtained equation 25, we are saying that okay, I want us to take notice of this one once again, that our x transpose times x is going to give us what? A scalar, which is the same as what? x norm square. That is what we have here. And then we also understand from here, and even from the previous slides, explanation that well, this E1 transpose is a row vector times a column vector is going to give us what a scalar and that scalar from the previous one we we said we'll call it what x1 so x1 which is what we have over here that's pretty simple so if yeah. yeah so from equation equation 26 
We understand that okay, from here, we can do some cancellations. These two cancels this one's here, and this one from having rewrite rewriting this one in terms of the this whole expression here, then it means uh, the denominator can cancel the numerator, uh, which eventually happens to have our x minus our u. So that is pretty simple. So from it. Question 27, we know our u can be written as terms of, in terms of this expression here. So when you expand through, eventually you, we happen to get our, our full expression as the x transpose to be in terms of what? The norm of x times what? Our standard basis vector. So that is a reflection that we are, in, we have been talking about all this while. So meaning to get yeah.